Now, if you're about to say, But Man Pig, you just stole this idea from the voice of Saint Quartz. To that I answer, yeah, kinda. I'm sorry. Hello fellow Chaldean masters and welcome to yet again another video created by the Man Pig. Now, at the time of this video's upload, 2018 is soon to come to an end, and thus the new year of 2019 will soon grace us with their days of more suffering and painful life. Because of that, there will of course be more servants that will get released next year onto the NA server, and since Quartz is a limited resource, I've decided to make this list to give you masters some recommendations on what servants you should potentially save those precious gemstones for. So with that, these are the requirements of the list. First off, these servants are going to be judged on their difficulty to be obtained. The variables include rarity, whether they are limited or story locked, and how many banners that they might take part of. So harder to obtain good servants will be higher on the list even if the lower ones might be considered better. Secondly, they're also judged on gameplay. I know in the end you play this game to collect characters, but in that case you'd likely roll for them regardless. This is to help those players that want a strong or helpful servant that they can use. Finally, no welfare servants. At all. Because you should always get them. Always. Finally, and most importantly, these are just recommendations. This is not a completely objective scale on which servant is outright best, better, or whatever of that such. I think that's impossible since each servant has the potential to excel in a different way or another, and that different players will look for different things in a servant, which can judge how much they like using them. Yes, some servants will be able to do certain things better than another, and some servants can do more things than others. But that doesn't change the fact that every servant is unique and will likely offer different things that can help in different situations. With that in mind, please note these are my own personal recommendations and what I find are the most versatile or most powerful in usage, especially when used well. So before you type that angry comment telling me how my list is wrong, Please remember that you are free to disagree or have a different opinion on which servants you think are most worth your quartz. After all, the decision to roll is ultimately yours. Now with that out of the way, let me first get through the honorable mentions who didn't quite make this list. those out of the way, let's get to talking about the actual servants that did make the list. Number 10. Saber Imperio, Yagyu Munenori. Yagyu is a bit of an underrated saber. He has the unique ability to be a burst damage art saber that can take advantage of crits. His first skill increases his arts card performance for one turn, as well as increase the crit star absorption for his arts card specifically for one turn as well. He doesn't have the best star generation himself, so I highly recommend pairing him with a crit generator like a max limit broken 2030 or a servant to make this skill truly ridiculous. 
His second skill is your standard evade, with the bonus of increasing attack as well. I definitely recommend this skill for its evade rather than its attack buff, though, but it does act as a good bonus. Finally, his last skill decreases a target's attack while increasing his NP gain for one turn by a huge percentage, which can be really effective in weakening an opponent's attack or pairing it with his first skill for huge NP refunds with his crit burst arts cards. An ideal moment would be to use his first and second skills with the Noble Phantasm Arts Arts Chain, which will not only make him do a shitload of damage, but also refill his NP gauge to nearly, if not max, instantly while decreasing the enemy's attack potency by a huge percentage. This can be extremely useful if the enemy is at full Noble Phantasm, or full charge. His Noble Phantasm itself is a very simple one. Arts dealing damage Noble Phantasm with the effect of also lowering enemy attack. He's quite strong for an Arts team, and shines especially if you have a good crit generator. Emiya Assassin works great as he is an Arts-based crit generator, and those crits work great when Yagyu makes his burst. The main bump with Yagyu's usage is that he lacks consistency, due to being extremely focused on powerful bursts. Certain effects he has on his skills only last one turn rather than three, meaning you need to time yourself to take advantage of his cards and abilities at their maximum potential, or just disregard them in favor of another one of their effects entirely. He suffers from having these burst skills at an average cooldown, meaning he can't spam them very well so Tamamo benefits him a lot. However, due to this, he is placed at the bottom of the list, but still definitely worth the mention. And if you use him well, you'll find that he is great for huge bursts of ridiculous damage. He is also story locked to Shimosa, so there will be a sliver of chance to get him into story gacha should you miss him on his initial rate up. And trust me, you shouldn't. Number 9. Caster of Midrash. Queen of Sheba. Sheba is a servant that I tend to find very forgettable. Is that just me? That's just me, isn't it? Regardless, while I might forget her existence from time to time, her abilities as a half-support, half-offensive caster are definitely worth considering adding to your arsenal. With a unique deck for a caster featuring two buster cards and two arts cards rather than three arts cards like most casters have. This also pairs well with her third skill, which increases the entire party's arts and buster card effectiveness for three whole turns, while gaining a pinch of critical stars. This is her best skill, as it acts as a complement to her deck as well as allow her to support fellow servants, making her a good choice to pair with a powerful buster servant with two arts cards. Her second skill might seem powerful at first glance, but it is kinda situational since crit or quick teams aren't something that she really melds well into. But it does have invincibility break, so it can help in a few situations. Her Noble Phantasm is a single target arts Noble Phantasm that does pretty good damage, and for overcharge effects, it is able to give a flurry of debuffs to the enemy. Although the defense and attack down are definitely the ones you'll be using the most often. This is an NP I highly recommend using last or in the middle in a chain since the benefits are all in the overcharge effect. Shiba's definitely unconventional in her support methods, but she manages to work surprisingly well as an indirect support type servant for Arts Buster teams despite that, while being able to dish out decent damage herself. She is also story locked to Salem, so definitely look out for getting her on raid up during that time, lest you'll be forced to fish around in the story gotcha for her. Number 8. Saber. Frankenstein. So, after the extremely disappointing mess that is Berserker Frankenstein. Why are you so bad? You deserve so much better. <laughs> the adorable Frankenstein was finally given proper and well deserved justice in the form of her summer Saber counterpart. She is a quick base saber with two quick and two buster cards. Her star generation is nothing impressive, but her noble phantasm gen is quite good when you factor in her hit count and first skill, the latter which makes her NP gen skyrocket to unimaginable levels at the cost of 10 NP gauge, which can allow her to NP spam despite her one arts card. Her skills in general are pretty decent, but they are held back by the fact that they all have demerits tied to their usage. Her first skill's demerit is negligible, since the NP gen she gains after it can more than make up for it. The two other skills, however, though, take away from her HP, so having a healer or debuffer is recommended when using her. 
BB works especially well for that as she can do that with a fitting deck. Fran also has good passives in the form of Madness Enhancement E for those Buster cards, but more importantly, Riding EX for those Quick cards. Her NP is a single target quick NP that does quite considerable damage, but its true worth comes from its effects. It has a medium chance to stun an enemy for one turn, and has a tiny chance to stun all enemies for the next turn. Now, the latter effect does not happen very often, but when it does, oh boy, that's a free turn you just got right there. Despite her gameplay seeming wonky at first, with a quick buster deck designed around NP spam and medium chance at stunning, Saber Fran is a surprising monster as a 4 star quick saver, and now that Scotty exists, she can become a complete beast in gameplay for her 4 star rarity. The only thing keeping her from being a 5 star in disguise are the demerits that her last two skills have, which can be worked around with a good debuffer or healer. Again, Nurse BB will fix all those boo boos. Thanks, Nurse BB. As any Summer Servant, she will only become available during the Summer Servant raid ups. 2019 Summer Roster isn't as amazing as 2018 Summer Roster overall, in my opinion. So, out of all the Summer Servants, I highly recommend you specifically aim for Fran. If you aren't waiting for any potential Summer Servants higher up on this list. And trust me, there will be some. Number 7 Alter Ego, Melt Lilith, and Passion Lip. Yes, I did indeed cheat a bit with this entry, thank you for pointing that out. But seriously, I'll explain. First off, they are both limited servants that are initially available on the same banner and have the same amount of overall rate ups excluding the Lucky Bag campaigns. At least at the time that I'm writing the script. Second off, both their main draw comes from something they both share, their class. The Alter Ego class is a very interesting but very powerful class to use, and the fact that they are Alter Egos already makes them a great option, as they are basically half a Berserker without the fragility in trade of being less effective on the Knight classes. This class can be quite versatile against the right enemies, and for beginners especially, can be a godsend especially since they're very easy to ascend. Kiara isn't included here because she's on a different banner, and in my honest opinion is quite mediocre in comparison. However, know that the Alter Ego is a great class to have on your side, and while the Mecha Elichan duo will come not long after for free, they are welfares, and they also have a slightly different kind of gameplay that you may or may not be a fan of. They are still pretty good though. With this, I shall get into the specifics of the two. As a servant, Melt is a good balance between a solid offense and a slightly less solid survivability. She is quick based and serves as a very good quick servant too, with her passives helping her quick related strength, with strong skills that allow her to deal even more damage even with her quick based gameplay. If anything, you need to time yourself to use certain skills depending on the flow of the battle, meaning some actual thought and chance might be needed to get these skills used at full ability. But personally, I don't mind skills that can be used in multiple ways, it just makes them more versatile in a slight manner. Next up, we have Passion Lip, who on first glance is very simple. And while she sorta is, she can also be extremely powerful while staying relatively balanced too. She is very similar to Ruler Martha in base gameplay, but with different, MUCH BETTER skills. These skills allow her to be both more defensive and offensive on both fronts, which pairs well with her simple buster gameplay. Like Ruler Martha though, she doesn't have a very good NP gen, and unlike Martha, she has nothing to help with that. So pairing her with a support that can get her NP up faster can be a huge benefit especially since her NP's overcharge effect is a powerful party heal alongside some very good AoE damage. I could go far more in depth with these two, but I'd rather save the little details for a potential video, so I'll leave you with their bare abilities for now. To conclude, they are both very powerful alter egos that can definitely pull their weight, even without their awesome class put into mind. However, they are also balanced, meaning that they have some effects working against them, each their ease of usage or situational skills. Still, these two are definitely worth rolling for, and are each only available two times outside of the lucky bag gotchas. 
so put them on good priority, and they will serve you well. Number six, Lancer, Minamoto no Raiko. I'll be the first to admit that I am very mixed when it comes to Raiko. Her design just doesn't quite sit well with me for reasons that I may or may not need to explain. And while her personality is kinda charming, it also scares me for the reasons that I may or may not need to explain. However, in terms of a unit, I can look past all of that. Because guess what? Lancer Raiko is just as much of a complete monster as her berserker counterpart. And here's why. Raiko is scarily similar to Lancer Artoria Alter. And I'm not just talking about their bust. Yeah, you know, one of the best SR Lancers in the entire game, able to take advantage of strong crits combined with big buster cards to deal a shit ton of damage in one excessive nuke? Mm -hmm. Lancer Raiko is extremely similar to that, only marginally more reliant on her team to generate stars, and the fact that she can remove her debuffs with skill too. Although with her third skill, her star generation on her own is quite decent. Her Noble Phantasm is also a strong, single target buster damage beast of an NP that also generates a very good amount of stars for her own usage next turn. And that's really all I need to say. She is very similar to Lancer Artoria Alter, and Raiko really just shows off exactly why Lancer Artoria Alter is considered good. They have differences too despite this though, as Raiko is slightly more of a team player and has a single target NP. So even if you do have Lancer Artoria Alter, Lancer Raiko is a great pick to have if you do come across her as well. That however, will be less of a common thing, as she is a summer servant and those are only available in summer as you'd expect. So good luck to those masters rolling for her, and trust me, she will not disappoint. And now we get to the top 5. Now, just a reminder that these are all merely recommendations. I say this because the following are all great servants who are completely debatable on who is better than the other, and whether they deserve their rankings on this list. Yeah, they're all that good. So, keep in mind that these are just all my opinion and what I personally would recommend to you. Just so you know, they're all about equal. Number 5. Saber. Miyamoto Musashi. Everyone watching, meet your queen of the Saber Buster memes. Musashi at first glance might seem like a simple servant with her full 3 card buster deck, and well, that wouldn't be entirely wrong. Her deck and purpose are relatively simple in those aspects. Deal shit tons of damage in one powerful burst, not unlike Jolter. Although, she does have skills that complement her style and allow her to excel, either to be even stronger offensively or to survive a bit longer. Her first skill might seem a bit weird at first, but considering her buster deck and above average hit count on her two other cards, it can actually prove a good asset. When paired with a Brave Chain, it can maximize the amount of NP generated or crit stars generated by starting with either one of her two other cards. As their hit counts are doubled, their effects are as well. So even with an ABB Chain or QBB Chain, you can get some decent mileage of their effects while increasing damage for that turn too, especially with set above average hit counts. It's a very unique but interesting skill that allows Musashi to compensate for her pure damage loadout and complements her as a unit very well. Her two other skills are simple but still just as effective. She has a huge buster buff that complements her deck and NP and allows her to pierce invincibility too. Her final skill gives her an invincibility of her own while removing all debuffs and allowing her to generate more stars for 3 turns. Consider pairing this with her first skill for maximum mileage and crit stars. Her Noble Phantasm is a damage behemoth of a single target buster meme that rivals even Jolter's power thanks to its overcharge effect. And due to her deck, it's extremely easy to make a buster rave chain with it. Its ability to remove all buffs is also an extremely useful bonus, plus it just looks goddamn awesome. What's not to love? She has a fucking stand wielding four swords that will annihilate everything, and one big final slash to make sure whatever she hits will die. I love it, and you do too. Don't lie to yourself. To sum things up, this woman can fit so much damage in her. 
Musashi is a very powerful servant that's also extremely easy to use. Even with her seemingly simple gameplay, her first skill allows her to take decent advantage of her other cards even with her full buster loadout. Musashi will be able to do shit tons of damage to any enemy she comes across and survive just as well. For those in need of a powerful single target saver but missed out on Okita or Narrow Bride, here's another chance because Musashi easily makes a case for being arguably the best saber in the entire game at this point in time. She is limited, however, and her first raid up takes place in the New Year's Gotcha, right after Merlin. So remember to save some of your quartz for her as well. If not, she does get another raid up in Shimosa, and for the next New Year campaign as well, so you will get more chances in case you miss this wonderful woman. Number 4. Ruler, Sherlock Holmes. Holmes is a very, very powerful servant. And not just because the ruler class is one of the best classes in the game, which automatically makes a servant more viable than others on its own. Now, don't let his skills in Noble Phantasm fool you. Holmes is a fantastic support and damage dealing hybrid who can dish out insane amounts of damage, especially with the use of his Noble Phantasm. Hmm? What's that? Are you asking me how a non-damaging Noble Phantasm can do shit tons of damage? <coughs> Elementary, my dear viewer. You are looking at one of the best arts crit servants in the entire game. Indeed, Holmes is an arts ruler with the ability to generate a decent amount of critical stars, as well as take advantage of them. Of course, as any good detective should, he can make the most out of these stars with the use of his Noble Phantasm. What his MP does is that it lowers the defense of the enemy party by a considerable amount. 30% might not seem like much, but it's a solid number, especially when paired with the other effects. Party Invincibility Pierce, Party Defense Buff Ignore, and the best part, a BASE 50% increase in critical damage that increases with overcharge that lasts 3 turns. This final effect complements with the other effects very well. And if you have a good crit generator on your team, this normal phantasm will allow both Holmes and your other team members to simply annihilate the health of enemies with absolutely ridiculous amounts of crit damage. This man's NP will simply make crits from normal attacks melt whatever they hit, and it's really impressive to see those effects firsthand. His standard gameplay is a mix of arts and quick with good hit counts on every card to get the most out of their effects. His normal phantasm gain and star generation is above average, but nothing amazing. Introduce other servants, and he does the job as a compliment surprisingly well. His skills allow him to take advantage of those effects even better, either by generating crit stars, increasing his own star absorption, and finally, his arts performance. Meaning his arts cards will actually be pulling more weight than his buster card, which itself fares greatly with the crits. Two of his skills do have survivability effects tied to them, which might not seem useful, but they're a nice bonus in case of a debuff heavy enemy or an enemy NP. Holmes is the sort of support that is able to dish out good amounts of damage through normal attacks and is perfect for any arts crit teams. He'll take whatever crits you have and maximize their effectiveness. Seriously, if the ruler class wasn't enough incentive to make you at least curious, you'll find his usage is amazing when you got a steady source of stars coming in and this man will only be available during the anniversary banners and the murder at the Kogetsukan banner when excluding the lucky bags. You'll have your chances to get him. And out of all the rulers, I cannot recommend this detective enough to solve any difficult level for you. Number 3. Assassin. The Old Man of the Mountain. King Hassan. Hearken to his words, mortal living creature. For the oracle hath descended. Grandpa King Hassan has arrived, and he is just as powerful as lore would give. King Hassan is similar to Musashi in that he's a very simple, but very, very powerful servant, and is arguably one of the best assassins in the game up there with Jack. There is a lot to explain about this guy despite his simplicity, so I'm going to condense it to the best of my ability. First, he is a rare breed known as the Buster Assassin, and his only other real competition are Cleopatra and Danzo. And while both are still good units, neither pull it off as well as the old man. 
King Hassan has the three card buster deck with a buster noble phantasm, with both high HP and high attack stats for the assassin class. Immediately, he stands out from other assassins with his good stats and unorthodox deck, but it all benefits him. The old man has good hit counts on his arts and quick cards, with a solid NP gain and fantastic star generation, allowing him to take those cards to their full extent to make up for his soul buster deck. His high HP for an assassin allows him to be surprisingly tanky despite his class, and that's only cemented with the debuff resist, defense up, and heal buffs that come with his extremely powerful second skill. However, if you do somehow get him too low, no worries. He has Battle Continuation EX, the best version of the skill, which allows him to revive at 5000 HP when max. That's considerably more than a third of his total HP. So even if this old man falls, he will get back up. Oh, but no worries, he isn't just a tank. He hits hard too. Again, he has a very high attack stat for an assassin with a full buster deck. And what helps with that? His second and third skills that increase attack and buster effectiveness respectively. The latter which is basically a mana burst with an added effect. But if that wasn't enough, he reduces all enemies' death resist by a high percentage, especially when maxed, which means he pairs well with other good death reliant servants like both Shikis, Lobo, and even Nidokris to a lesser extent. His Noble Phantasm is just as simple as his deck, Azrael, the Judging Slash. A strong, single target buster Noble Phantasm that does a very good amount of damage, with the increased chance of dealing instant death, making it ideal to pair with his last skill. Also, a really minute but really cool detail with his Noble Phantasm is that if it manages to kill an enemy, they will have no death animation following it. Azrael Slash alone literally erases their life from this world, and it's terrifyingly badass. The old man is definitely an unorthodox assassin, and while he can generate crit stars pretty well like most assassins, he is more of a damage dealing servant rather than a crit generator. He hits extremely hard, tanks heavy blows, and can get back up afterwards with ease. This man will not die easily, and he will rain divine judgment on the mortals who dare stand before him. He will only be available for two gotchas outside of the Lucky Bag banners, so make sure you obtain him during those times. Trust me, you should not miss him. Number 2. Caster. Nero Claudius. Yeah, yeah, it's Gainactified Concale Nero coming at you in a swimsuit as a brand new caster class servant. And yes, she is ready to destroy everything that comes in front of her. Narrow Caster is an offensive caster who is both familiar in terms of gameplay, yet unique to her class, and does it in a way that makes her a COMPLETE MONSTER IN PLAY. Why is that, you may ask? Well first, let's begin with her stats. She's got low HP and a high attack stat for her class. Standard stuff from what you'd expect from an offensive caster, but now we get to her deck. What's this? Two red cards? But wait! If her Noble Phantasm is Buster, holy god she can actually Buster Brave Chain with her Noble Phantasm. Speaking of her MP, it's a relatively strong AoE Buster MP that ignores invincibility and increases its own effectiveness for an overcharge effect. This overcharge effect is really appreciated due to the negative attack modifier that casters have. It's not special or unique, but it hits hard and gets the job done really well. Now you might ask, due to her extra buster card for the chains, you'd assume her Noble Phantasm gain takes a bit of a hit compared to other casters maybe? <laughs> no fam. She's got a 0.40 NP gain which might seem bad on paper until you realize her 6 hit arts card. Jesus god what is this woman? That's better than Chloe. You know, the dedicated NP spammer. But oh wait, she goes even further. Her first skill is an NP charge battery, and oh boy, it's not weak. Not only does it rise from a 30 charge at base to an enormous 50%, but if her HP is low, Noble Phantasm generate up. As if her Noble Phantasm gain wasn't already fracking amazing, 
this woman has the potential to be a spammer with another boost for her at half HP. Like, do you even need it at that point? How about we go even further? Let's stick Caster Tama with her and see those two shoot their normal phantasms off so consistently that they might as well be breaking the game. But enough about her normal phantasm. How about normal attacks? Second skill, increases her defense by a solid 30%. And if there happen to be some pesky riders or zerkers there, no worries, she'll just ignore class advantage for damage coming to her. A situational but surprisingly fun skill, especially with berserkers. However, she does not have a heal, so if her low HP is a real fear of yours, I again highly recommend pairing her with Tamamo. Oh by the way, this skill also increases attack by 30%. Hit even harder! <laughs> And finally we get to her third skill. If you thought this woman wasn't crazy already, wait till you see this. A powerful attack buff that goes from 30% to 50% and giving a gut for 3 turns that allows whatever servant to revive at 1 HP and it's FUCKING TARGETABLE! Yep, she's got a bit of potential support there if you need it. And that buff is not weak. The Guts is more of a situational effect, but that attack buff is insane. Its only weakness is its cooldown, which is a bit high. Good thing there's someone who can fix that. Like it or not, Caster Nero is a complete beast, with a ton of abilities that benefit her greatly, and a unique playstyle for a caster. That being that she plays like a typical saber on steroids. But seriously, Summer Nero is a complete fucking monster. And if you want a strong caster servant, please remember that you can only get her during the summer events. You really shouldn't miss her. She's a fucking powerhouse and is a strong, independent caster that can pull her weight and provide a strong attack buff to anyone else. I especially recommend pairing her with Tamamo specifically, if it wasn't obvious enough already, for the reasons I've already stated. Seriously, Caster Nero is so unique for her class, but just so good, that she, in my opinion, pretty much ties, if not surpasses the next servant on the number one spot. The only reason she isn't there is because the next servant is quite a bit rarer as of the time I wrote this script and also offers a good amount of buffs for the entire party to benefit from. And that servant is... Number 1. Lancer, Eresh Kigal. Now, if you're a big fan of Eresh like I am, or are really surprised, trust me, I was too at first. But once I learned how amazing she was, she quickly rose to the top of the list. Eresh is a servant that I find most people don't talk about. Either that, or I'm a bigger shut-in than I thought, which would be good, she deserves all the love. But if I am right in my assumption, she needs more people talking about her, because she is really bloody good, and not just because she's a really cute blonde Rin. The bias could possibly be there though. Stat-wise, she has the highest HP of all Lancers, at an enormous 16,065 HP second only to John for the highest HP stat for any playable servant. However, in contrast, her attack is very low, one of the lowest attack stats for any 5 star and in the realm of 4 stars. She does have a Lancer attack modifier to make her attack a bit higher, but off the bat she doesn't seem that impressive. But then we look closer, she has really good hit counts pretty decent star generation, and a fair base NP gain rate. However, with a 6 hit arts card to make up for that Lancer deck, and a 4 hit quick card for Lancer, she actually has really good Noble Phantasm gain, even if you just use her quick cards. And now we get to her skills, which in my opinion, are easily the best part about her. First off, she's got an invincibility with the chance to grant strong side buffs that also help with her survivability. This skill is easiestly her most underwhelming one, as the buffs are situational, and would have benefited from lasting a few more turns. However, they can help from any additional effects that come from an enemy NP, Jolter. Her second skill, though, is far better. 
It is a powerful Mana Burst-like skill that also charges her Noble Phantasm gauge by a very considerable amount. This is paired greatly for her Noble Phantasm for reasons I really should not need to explain. Finally, her final and by far her best skill is her last one, which provides a very solid amount of good buffs for the whole party. First off, a 20% defense up when maxed to make everyone just a bit more tanky. Second, 30% Noble Phantasm generation up when maxed to get everyone charging their Noble Phantasms faster. And finally, a fat 3k max HP add-on when maxed that acts as both a pseudo heal and a buff for those who aren't that hurt, and all of them stay in play for a solid 3 turns, which I'd say makes up for the 6 turn cooldown at max. It also gives the whole party the protection of the underworld buff for 3 turns as well, which is a unique buff that is also to be used in conjunction with her Noble Phantasm. That Noble Phantasm is a strong AoE buster Noble Phantasm that will bring every enemy on the field to the depths of the underworld. It increases her own buster performance by a bit for an overcharge effect, so it's a decent NP to pair with Edison. Although its real benefit is that it gives a 20% attack buff for 3 turns to members of the party with the protection of the underworld buff from her third skill, making it also ideal to pair with her Noble Phantasm for a strong, powerful burst. You should also note that the protection of the underworld can also be on its last turn, and if you use her Noble Phantasm, the attack buff will still be there for 3 turns, so you can keep that in mind when timing stuff. She isn't as ridiculous as Castor Nero, nor as easy to use as Musashi and King Hassan, but Eresh Gigal is a strong independent lancer that can help buff her entire party as well as herself to deal powerful bursts of damage and offer consistent gameplay should you need it. She is a jack of all trades in a way, except also not really. Her attack stat is, in the end, underwhelming. But with her potential buffs, that fact can also be countered with good usage, especially when her Noble Phantasm and third skills are put into play. Of course, that's on top of the high survivability she offers, which is definitely a good thing to consider. Finally, and quite honestly the biggest reason that she's number one on this list, she's only part of a single banner at the time of this recording. Yep, she comes at the end of the year, and no other times. You have a small chance to pull her from the Lucky Bag banners, but otherwise, she is a rare and sought after servant. So if you're a fan of her character, find her myriad of buffs appealing, or just need a powerful lancer that can support both herself and the whole team, you have one chance to nail her. Good luck. And with that, there are my personal 10 recommendations for upcoming servants that you might want to save for. Again, these are just my opinion, and if you disagree with me, that's completely fine. Just don't be an asshole about it, please. If you'd like to, tell me which servants you're excited for and why in the comment section. And if you're also a JP player, tell us your experiences with upcoming servants, and why you think they might be worth the quartz. Other than that, I offer you good luck in your future roles, and may you be blessed with the servants that you are looking forward to. Shall we meet again? I will enjoy your company even further. Until then, farewell once again. Thank you.